What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Diablo Moral video. With the incoming new Tempest class and me anticipating switching to test out the new class, I decided I should bring you my favorite Crusader build one last time as I have it so that it's here for all of you to reference when you want to build out your Crusader. I absolutely love this build. I use it in PvE and even sometimes in PvP as well and often in different events that are inside of the game. Throughout this video, I'm gonna break down everything about this build, from my charm, secondary gear, my pet, my primary gear, the gems I'm using, the skills I'm using, and everything so you can see how to build out your Crusader. So let's start out today with my skills. First, my primary attack is Sacred Fire, and then we go with a lot of skills that are pretty standard for Crusader. Draw and quarter on every single one. Condemn, Consecration, and Falling Sword. Now, the essences are what make all of this special, which we will get to in a moment. First, let's look at my charm. And to be quite honest, my charm is nothing good at all. I cannot roll a good charm here. I continuously roll it and roll it and roll it and get nothing. So all I have right now is drawn quarter plus 2% and consecration plus 2%. You may even have a better charm than I do already even if you're a new player. The pet that I'm rocking right here is a Legendary Ash Sweeper with Ferocity and Resilience of Legendary status. Honestly, I don't have anything crazy here. I don't have Survivor going for PvP. I have not been able to unlock that, but I do think my pet is pretty epic. Well, actually legendary, so that's where he sits. Again, not in any way devastating or in a positive way to this build. It doesn't matter really either way. Survivor is what you want for PvP at least. But let's look at some of this secondary gear, starting with the Vethu's Urges. I'm going with the Awakener's Urge from Vethu, a two-piece set. It's gonna increase the duration of all beneficial effects on me or my party members by 30%. We don't need to go beyond that. A two-piece set is something that I love and it really is beneficial. Next, we have the Feasting Baron's Pack, which increases the duration of your harmful effects by 30%. Another really important one that I feel is very beneficial to me using my Crusader. And then we go a little bit on the defensive with a four piece of Untouchable Mount Bank, which is gonna give us the second set of properties unlocked. Each time you take damage, you have a 20% chance to gain a shield that absorbs damage equal to 13% of your maximum life can occur more than every nine seconds. Plus, I have a Mount Bank Shield damage absorbs, absorption increased to 33% of your maximum life, and you could move unhindered through enemies while the shield is active. I like this one. A lot of people may choose to not use it, but I like adding a little bit of defensive elements into my build, and this, in my opinion, is my best way of doing it. So when I'm in the open world and doing farming, I keep on Treasure Hunter most of the time. And when I go into anything PVP related or even Heliquary, I'll throw on my Gladiator Tree, which will give me that little extra boost for something that's more competitive. My attributes from the Herodrum are right here. As you can see, yours is gonna be where it is depending on the progress that you've made throughout the Herodrum. That's mine. I'm sitting with a combat rating of 34,477. And if you take a look at my residence, it's only 2,056. Now, if we wanna briefly look at my gems, we'll just pull up this screen here. I'm going with the Void Spark. I think this is incredible for farming. Sparks everywhere, they go crazy. I have it ranked up to a rank four, and it's only a three out of five stars, which is perfect for me. We have a Viper's Bite, which is gonna give that poison throughout. It's on its way to being a rank seven, which will allow me to awaken another slot. But this is a really great gem, especially if you're looking for a two star to rank up. I do have my Fervent Fang up to rank 10. Remember this gem you could really only get from Battle Pass and from the Boon of Plenty. So it's one that you should never get rid of no matter what the rank. Keep the gem because you could only get it in a small fashion and it takes a while to rank up to 10. I got it there and I wanted to use it. Essentially what it's doing is every time I deal damage to an enemy, the enemy now takes a 2.4% increased damage from my attacks up to a maximum of 24% on 10 stacks. So it allows me to essentially deal more damage. And because I have the slot awakened, we still yet have to fill it up. We are able to get the base attributes increased by 15% and we're gonna be able to work our way down and get primary attack damage, skill damage, and damage done increased 
per party member as we fill up the gem slots in the awakened positions. And then we have our pain clasp, one of the best two star gems at rank 10 again. And this increases the damage dealt by 24% to enemies suffering from continuous damage effect. And we get more movement as well when we're near enemies that are struggling with that continuous damage by 6%. So a nice little attribute added on as well. And as you can see, we got a little bit of gem resonance thrown in here. Uh, damage taken while moving is increased by 3%, which is great when you're a crusader on horseback. We also eventually will get damage taken while suffering loss of control is decreased and block chance being increased. So nice goals as we stack our resonance inside. I'm rocking the Maw of the Deep, which I actually love. It's a rank three, three out of five star gem, and I love just that sea monster that comes up, knocks back enemies, deals damage, and it happens every 20 seconds. A lot of people like it, some people don't. I think it's actually great for both PvP and for PvE. Blood Soak Jade, I got mine at rank five, three out of five stars, plus a 16% as well, because I'm slowly putting some gems into it and this one right here is going to increase your damage increase your speed this is probably the best gem in the game and probably will be for a long time uh no matter what level you are i think this one should be in your build no matter what class you are if you have availability to get it we're working on our mother's lament it's only a rank five right now and this one when you deal damage you have a 20 percent chance of gaining maternal disdain increasing your critical hit chance by 20 percent for six seconds N more critical hit I'll take crit all day. And then we just started playing around with the Gloom Gem. Notice I haven't even gotten it up to a three out of five star. It's still at rank two, just playing with it, but it does give me some range on my attack and I actually quite like it. Your primary attack unleashes an aspect of Gloom for six seconds, during which time your primary attacks will trigger Gloom Blades that deal 36% of damage. Cannot occur more than once every 20 seconds. It's a nice touch to the build. I actually like it, and we'll demonstrate that after we go through all the gear. Starting off with my headpiece, we are rocking Sacrificial Flame. Consecration now engulfs you in intense holy flames, dealing damage to yourself and nearby enemies. The damage is increased by 18%. Keep in mind, there are times you may not want to use this if you're at low health or if you're at a massive damage dealing boss because it will do damage to yourself. Make sure that you have some shielding ready or that you have some health globes that you could pop. It's a very little bit of health at a time that it'll take from you, but it does do a ton of damage to your enemies. Lightning in a bottle is the essence we're working with here. Condemn now conjures a condensed lightning storm that follows you randomly, dealing damage to nearby enemies. The damage is increased of Condemn of 18%. So essentially just a lightning storm that follows you, taking down enemies is beautiful for PvE. Civ Kit's advantage is gonna give your draw and quarter duration an increase by 39%. Plus, notice that's purple, I have it awakened as well, so I'm getting an additional 10%, which means the build I'm rocking right now has 100% uptime on horse, which means I can run around and 100% of the time be on the horse. I do that through a lot of ways not only from things like this and essences, but also through my gears and the gear rerolls. And what I mean by that, I'll give you an example right here. These are the bonuses that you get. This is a level 26 piece of gear, which means I can have five bonuses attributed. If you have a level 21 piece of gear, you can get yourself four attributed to it. And here I have the beneficial effect duration is increased by 2%. Every piece of gear I have has this. The duration of beneficial effects increased by 2% is going to make it so that your skills last longer. And if you can get 2 to 3% on every piece, you're looking at a good increase in uptime on all your skills. Then we have Light Charger. Drawn Quarter now calls a horse of light, causing those that stand within the aura to take damage. Drawn quarter damage is increased by 18%, and again, the cooldown is decreased by 10% because it's an awakened purple slot. So between the legs and the shoulders, I have an additional 20% cooldown reduction on my horse because those slots have been awakened. Now for my primary weapon, I have Definity Rod. Falling Sword now follows you, damaging nearby enemies and reducing their movement speed. Falling Sword damage is increased by 18%. This is a massive part of this build. The the radius of this is massive. I'll show you guys in a moment. But also on this piece, I have some cursed properties. Created a dark void beneath me. I like that. I honestly don't focus too much on the cursed elements. Now my shield, my secondary weapon is Torrential Refrain. 
Condemn immediately triggers all continual damage on targets it hits, causing them to take remaining damage instantly, and the cooldown is reduced. Now for our stance weapons. Remember, the essences from your primaries and from your stance weapons are all active at the same time, as long as they don't contradict one another. Here we go with Horn Splitter. Sacred Fire now ignites enemies, burning them for 7,000 damage over two seconds, and the damage is increased by 90%. So more damage to my primary attack. And my stance secondary weapon is Batter Them. Condemned damage is increased by 3% for every enemy hit, up to a maximum of 24% increased damage. So that is all of the gear that we're wearing, and let's actually see it in action. So we've recently gotten some new challenge rift levels, and we have a whole bunch of levels that we could skip to. Haven't done these yet. We're gonna dive in and see how well I can run through it. All right, not sure how high of level the monsters are gonna be. It looks like we're not gonna have any issue here. So essentially I run through for a challenge rift, and I just draw and quarter everything while popping my skills as I go. Pay attention to the aura around me. Pay attention to how I am almost always up on my horse, unless if I get knocked back, and the uptime I have on all of my skills. Almost everything can remain up all of the time. And since I'm running through a challenge rift, I can just run right through this and I don't have to worry about any gear dropping. Also, look at the radius. Look at how wide that, that dull circle is around me. That's falling sword doing damage and dropping swords anywhere within that radius. So that's really nice. And we have the burn around me right now. Here's some falling sword, which will get enemies that are quite far away, which is nice. And we also have a second ring around us right here. That's gonna be the lightning that just follows me around and allows me to take down anything. As you can see, the lightning just takes everything down. We can then add some burn to that as well if we want to. And if we want some of that extended range, we just throw on the lightning and uh, there we go, falling sword from afar. And we just can stand still right here in front of the enemy. Look at more of the deep being activated right there as well. Make sure we don't go down. We got stunned for a second there. Man, I think I think that short little look right there lets you see a whole lot of things, both how the gems are working as well as how all the skills work together and how we have such good uptime on all of our different skills that we've been using. Let me know what you guys think of the build and how you may have your Crusader built out in the comment section below. I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, consider subscribing for daily Diablo Moral videos, bringing you news, guides, playthroughs, and everything relating to the game.